opposed to some of the other sessions don't have quite as ambitious an agenda as we've had in the past. Nevertheless, it's just as important. So, let's say this one to start our uh, council questions, which we normally do. Heavenly Father, uh, we are gathered again to uh, conduct the business of the Van Alstine City Council. Uh, again, and as always, we thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed on our community, on our citizens, uh, on our staff, on our volunteers, and everyone uh, in our community, and we are thankful. Uh, we ask that you, uh, again, give us the knowledge, the wisdom, and the ability to carry out uh, the duties of this, uh, of this council and of the city uh, to uh, uh, carry out these duties uh, in, your, in your own will. Uh, it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas.
Please keep that uh, goal uh, communication so we can talk about this. Yes, more. yes. I, and I'm no longer the person who's in charge, so I'll pass the word along. But I've told her I mentioned it at this meeting. Oh. <clears throat> well, that was the only one. Is there any other uh, public comments? At this time, we have one more. Uh, I don't five. This is present to the presentation to uh, this is here in town. So, Chief Barnes, would you know? Uh, Mr. White uh, wasn't able to make it. He didn't confirm he's going to be here, so maybe something came up. But I'll go ahead and uh, publicly recognize him for his actions. On July the 5th, uh, Mr. White uh, put himself at personal risk of assisting one of our officers that was dealing with an individual that was high on narcotics and was fighting the officer. He stopped and assisted that officer and was able to. Uh, uh, we were able to place that individual in custody without anybody getting injured. So we wanted to uh, publicly uh, recognize him for the uh, Citizen Public Safety Award. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Craig White. He is a citizen here in Austin. Super. You know, there's uh, an awful lot of negative uh, associated these days with, with things that happen in law enforcement and this just goes to show that really people's hearts are with uh when you want to concern and we want to thank you for life. Hopefully at some point we will do that in the first Thank you. Thank you. Item number six in accordance with chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, all the meetings all city council may meet in a closed executive session pursuant to the applicable laws. Pursuant to the following designated sections of the Texas Government Code, annotated subchapter 551, the council will enter into executive session to discuss the following items. Section 551.087, economic development negotiation regarding uh, one project green and two Rislin. And at this time, it's uh, 1838. Uh, we'll uh, try to take this. Y'all think safe was moving? We're all here. Yeah, so I will make a motion to direct the city manager to move forward on Project Green incentive package as discussed in executive session. Second. No motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the city of Project Green. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Consider taking the action necessary regarding approval of minutes from the July 16, 2019 regular meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All in favor, any final reason to reject it? Number nine. Steve. <laughs> is uh, here Parks uh, Master Plan presentation. Do you have anyone here to speak on that? Yeah. Why, yes. <laughs> several months looking at your park system, uh, taking an inventory, and helping you guys come up with an action plan for the next several years as you're growing in Van Alstine. So what I want to do tonight is give you a brief overview of the plan. Here's a hard copy of it. Link has several uh, that he'll distribute out. Um, but I think there is a presentation that's going to come up here. There we go. So there's just a few slides. I want to overview the process, uh, give you an idea of what's 
in the book. So really what we began several months ago, we uh, uh, took this point in a couple of different phases. The first one, we really had to get an idea of what we had in the park system. And so phase one is your inventory and your needs assessment. So we started with just some base mapping and really just boots on the ground, getting out and seeing your entire park system. We photographed it. Uh, we work with city staff to understand what your facilities are today, uh, what's in the system. We started comparing that with some national standards so that then you have a goal uh, to reach over the next several years in your park system. And probably the most important part of this step uh, is the end of phase one, which is where we did our public input and needs assessment. So that's when we were able to have some visioning sessions, several folks from the public were able to come out put their input into what they'd like to see in the park system over the next several years. And then uh, several folks in this room might even remember we had a citizen survey and we got a very strong response back. So that was great input into the plan which led us then into phase two where we start to recommend an action plan, make some action planning recommendations for where some of the priorities that come out of your citizen survey then go in your park system. Uh, we then went through an implementation plan where uh, we start to assign budget numbers uh, to the different priorities so you know what uh, costs would be associated with implementing the plan. And then those last two steps are what I'm holding in my hand is the preliminary and then the final master plan. So we submitted the preliminary part where we reviewed it in detail, we made some edits, and now what you're looking at tonight is the final. So here's the, the master plan. I uh, just put a snapshot of it. It's got some mapping in here that helps understand where the priorities uh, that are listed will go in your system. And then it's got this implementation plan. Now, in these books, it's more of an 11 by 17 fold out. I know it's kind of hard to read up there on that slide. But all those color card coded columns um, are the action plan items that came out of the citizen survey. Um, they include things like playgrounds, lighting in parks, practice fields, uh, benches, hike and bike trails. Those always rank very high in most park systems, especially the ones that are growing, like Van Austin is. Uh, the purple or the blue columns, those are all the parks in your system. So now each of the dots show where we would suggest playgrounds go, how much they would cost, um, and then the green is appropriately colored because it lists some different funding sources that you can go after to match uh, some of your city funds. And then the orange column is a timeline. Uh, would this be a one to two year item? Would this be a three to five year item? Would this be a longer term priority? So there were three categories of uh, park facility types that, that we had mapped out. High priorities, ones that the citizens have said are uh, in high need. We've gone through moderate priorities, so those are medium uh, priorities. And then we also have lower priorities, uh, which are just longer term items. Uh, some of those include a recreation center, a dog park is there, a disc golf and amphitheater, even a veterans memorial uh, showed up. And so then these are just some example photos of what some of your high priority items might be. Number one on the list was playgrounds. That's really no surprise because you're a growing community, you've got your families coming in, uh, you've got growing families, uh, playgrounds will continue to be popular here for a while. Lighting and parks showed up as your second highest priority. Uh, that's all the way from athletic lighting uh, down to pedestrian lighting or trails for night use. Outdoor multi-purpose fields. Uh, we live in North Texas, and it is high shoot sports zone here, and um, that is really showing up in your survey for Van Alstine as well. So any kind of multi-purpose field for all kinds of sports, including football, soccer, um, other field sports. Practice fields. This is something that I don't think any community that we work with in North Texas has enough of. So everybody always needs a place to practice. Benches, you know, really just simple, sitting along a trail, enjoying a uh, park. That showed up as a high priority to have some benches in your park system. And then hike and bike trails, um, of course. That's uh, growing in popularity um, across the metroplex. 
and it's really a high recreational value for a low capital investment. You can get concrete on the ground and you can serve all ages. You can serve the senior population, you can serve kids that are on bikes, that trail is popular for everyone. And then some of the other priorities that showed up, uh, ponds, fishing, more pavilions where folks can have uh, family reunions or group gatherings and birthday parties in parks, uh, just individual picnicking um, and a veterans memorial showed up as well. Now one of the last things that I want to show you is uh, we were tasked with taking the priority items that came out of the action plan and looking specifically at how spatially we might uh, rework the North Park. So this is just a concept idea uh, that's on the left side, that's the existing North Park facility. And then over on the right is a list of high, moderate, and low priority items that came out of the action plan. And so here is an idea of how North Park might be rearranged to fit some of those action items in. Those also would have to be faced in all at once. You can take that in bits and pieces. Uh, but the idea is to give you a concept of how you could take one of the most popular parks and rework that uh, to have the action plan items fit there. So I know that's a lot of information. Uh, there's a lot of months that we've been working on this. We've had some great input from staff, uh, like I said, from cardboard, from your citizens. And this plan really isn't meant to just sit on the shelf. Uh, this is really meant to be a tool for budget planning annually so that your park system can grow and can also just grow. So with that, that's an overview. Uh, if you guys have any questions, we can have email thanks from You can either do it tonight or you can continue it to the next meeting. I just want to go ask everybody at the council have a potential look at the
in this. So there were actual people came in. So just so you know, they came in, they presented all this. We had open meetings. We've had, was there two? I believe two citizens. So this this really hasn't even been done. It was, uh, this is just the final, I'm going to say, presentation. The nice copy, however you want to say it. So the citizens have had a chance to put in. That's where all the priorities that Elizabeth spoke with, and that's where all that came from. Right. So just so you know, it has been presented several times. This is just kind of the final copy that will be actually put in your repertoire when people come uh, to either greater businesses or, or subdivisions here. So well, one of the questions I had is where is like the renderings we looked at in the last link for that, some of the new That repertoire? is a different, that's a different project. So that considered considered this is one the master plan? Let me, let, me, let me help clarify this. This is the master plan that was started over a year ago. So as you pointed out, we've had several um, sessions with citizens to provide input into that. Uh, the Parks Board, like you said, has had two meetings to update it as we were getting closer to the final project and the rendering that's included in this was done as a courtesy to the city just to give you an idea of what could potentially happen. It wasn't meant to build that. Okay. It, was it, was just it was a concept only. It wasn't like yeah. perspective or proposed. So, it was concept only. Yeah. So the next step in the process is what you saw last time, Brian, yeah. which was to start developing renderings. Now yeah. there's already action being taken on this. I mean, we have a shared use path underway. We have three more grants that Bob is helping us apply for to extend our walking trails in the city. Um, we're working on park design um, for future development. I mean, we're using it as a guiding light, but that's what this tool is, is a guiding light. Um, I, I guess what I need to them tonight as far as here tomorrow, if on the in the plan there's different options for funding sources, state grants, and what each funding source is going to be. Right. So with the master plan in place, it gives Lane and the Parks Board leeway to show the state of Texas or whomever that we're not just blindly asking for money, we don't know what we're doing, we actually have a plan. And, and, and I am meeting cool. with one of those agencies tomorrow that, you know, is a funding pool for the city and it's nice to be able, and I would hand them this package regardless, but Marl, it's nice to have an approved master plan. Marl, I would say that this is kind of like when somebody comes to use the subdivision and it's a proposal, this is what they're saying. No, I know all that, but right. I was making sure because the way this is written up and it's appearing on this last page is we're agreeing to this. And that's why I had to confirm was not no. the case. And, and, it, and case. it can be updated at any time we would like to update. So I'm just giving you the ability to move forward to get the grants to all those things that's totally fine. Every, every major grant that I see. It's basically on. a business plan. Like every you grant. Want to go money. Every grant that I see that's state or federal wants to see a copy of our right. parks master plan. Just so they know we're not moving. Right. That's fine. All right, that's it. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the ordinance. ordinance. Do you need to put the number on there? As written. For the parks <coughs> master plan. A motion to second. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the city of the Yes. Mm -hmm. I found it nice and what one of the main points for me was that the parks board, the names of the parks board members on this master plan are different than the parks board members now. Yeah, that but the fact that they all agreed on it from one parks board to the next parks board really says something about it. Well, I'm kind of amazed how much I like standard cars. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, yes, yeah. uh, the other one more important. Yeah. <laughs> Consider taking the action necessary regarding authorized advertisement for bids for road improvements to Kelly Lane, Baker and Kelly Lane escrow funds. Currently, the city has an escrowed account for Kelly Lane $489,784.39. Now, maybe off a penny or two in, in my calculation, but that's what we have escrowed for the paving of Kelly Lane and out here. That was to be concrete, but we do we have no additional uh, contributors to this fund in the foreseeable future. It would probably take us out five years before we would get another development to pay into this and their contribution may be another two hundred or three hundred thousand into it. We cannot afford currently with that amount to concrete Kelly Lane from end to end. We would just do a portion of it. I would propose that we asphalt Kelly Lane so we don't have to deal with the issues of chip seal on that road because it receives a great deal of traffic. We can widen the road. We can put a asphalt overlay of two inches on top of the existing base. We have just restoned that road last week, so it's got a great base. Um, widen the road and asphalt it from end to end for an estimate of a three hundred thousand dollars. So I am asking council to uh, authorize my going out with a solicitation to uh, receive bids to asphalt Kelly Lane and move forward with getting that done as quickly as we can. Do you have a project time on how long that would take? How long the process is to pay no, that? the project to asphalt it from end to end, from start to finish, how long would that take to widen and do that on Kelly? Um, I've asphalted streets in other cities, and it depends on who your developer or who the uh, company is that is awarded the bid, but a road of that length would probably take about two weeks and it would require traffic control because we're widening the road. They would open up half the road to traffic and then pave half and then come back and do the other half. So, that's really my question is, do you still have quite a bit of traffic? Yeah, you still have traffic going through there, but it, it's, it's a manageable process. We're looking at probably, you know, 60 days for the bidding process and yeah. probably another 60. But the best part about Kelly Lane is we have built a phenomenal base. <laughs> you know, we've got a good platform to put asphalt on top of it and have it stay for 15 years. Could we include markings on the road too as well when we yeah, want we, yeah, we striping the whole yeah, ten yards. How much wider will it be just... Ma'am, it'd be, I think, 21 feet wide, is it, Bob? It's 21 two. That's what it would be. Typically, it would be. Yeah, 20 to What's 21 right feet, now? 2 inches. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I want to say it's 16. More like 15. Probably 16. <laughs> it's not very well. well are you counting the rocks on the grass? I'm going to say it's bigger than the side. It's a Well, one car and a person could be on the road down on the so I think I think while not the while not the ideal solution, I think this is a solution to uh, a chip sealing a road that has entirely too much traffic to handle chip seal. Any other questions? Katrina, you want to make a motion on this since your family got a wrench in your tire for that road the other day? I just told you all the reasons. I guess that tire wrench was through my daughter's tire. I know everyone laughed at that, but I mean, Kelly's been a thorn in the side for a Thank you. 
Folks, my time over the past month has been budget-related. <coughs> Property tax information has been received from the county tax assessor following or allowing the general fund budget proposal to be developed. <coughs> the utility budget requires additional work with the city waiting on the water rate study to be complete. <coughs> All data requested by the organization conducting the water rate study has been provided and the process is moving along as quickly as possible. Construction projects underway at the time of this writing include the shared use path wow. <coughs> that will connect the middle school to the high school, the new water and wastewater lines along <coughs> West Jefferson are nearing completion and several of our roads have been recently paved over the past week. Plans are underway to remove the old concrete piers that once held the grandstands at North Park. The city's goal is to have the piers and the pressed off box removed in the next 60 days. <clears throat> we have a company that is donating their time and equipment to make that happen, so I'm dependent upon that person finding the time to make that happen. Sanitation Solutions has donated the rollaway so that we can shed ourselves of all of that stuff. The scoreboard located at North Park will be taken down. The city will store that scoreboard for future application. Somewhere in the future we'll want it hanging on a wall someplace like this. I thought somebody wanted that. No, that was the other one and it's gone and that's the ISD they have. Additionally, the electrical panel at North Park, which is attached to two telephone poles, is leaning and needs to come down. We're getting bids to replace that with a smaller fuse panel. Negotiations with Rislin, the Manchway project, continue, and I remain confident that the city and Rislin can come to an agreement that will better the development agreement for both the developer and the city. The initial shovel of dirt was toned over last Friday at, and Rislin expects to start moving dirt and I think they have already done that. The city manager has held <coughs> several meetings with a large commercial real estate development company out of Dallas. They're expressing interest in bringing <coughs> new business to the city but they provided no specificity at this point in time. They're doing their due diligence and providing them with uh, their basic needs to help them along. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any uh, further comments from council? Um, I just wanted to remind everyone, I guess, the uh, The music in the park the next time is the 20th and we're going to the live at the floor drive.
uh, come see what your chamber's doing. We usually have a pretty good turnout. We have a good breakfast, uh, and we have good programs. So come see what your chamber's doing. Uh, also we have here uh, the Van Alstine Center Center. Uh, it's, it's next. That's next. Chamber. Oh, I'm sorry. Chamber. Thursday. You scared me. What is today? Tuesday. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm sorry. I have a Now it's on me. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Council Tuesday, that's what it is. You're welcome to come by. Bring some breakfast. Bring your own breakfast. What's your breakfast tomorrow? Yeah, bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yes. The Senior Center is presenting a senior information series for anyone that's interested. Uh, they're having speakers in August, September, and October. Uh, August is uh, August 3rd. Uh, what was the county assessment? The next one is September 7th. Uh, September 7th, yes, is Will's Power of Attorney, Medical Power of Attorney Trusts, and more. And in October, uh, we have a speaker talking about reverse mortgages, other financing options uh, for, this, for seniors. Everybody's invited, no age requirement. Uh, Please come with questions and there will be refreshments. Um, yes, after the breakfast. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, a shout out uh, to KBAB. Our next meeting is September 16th. September 16th. Uh, please come see what's going on with, with KBAB. We're welcoming new members. Uh, very, very inexpensive membership. Day. Uh, and uh, lots of activities to be a part of the community and our president sitting right here. Yep, yep. Um, we also have a free watermelon event. It's going to be at the farmer's market the Tuesday following that whole memorial or Labor Day, sorry, wrong month, Labor Day event. Um, so we'll be doing that and having water and be a lot of fun for just blowing off the summer. Have some watermelon, get sticky, we got wet wipes, you know? Just like those are people to have fun, you know? So we'll be doing that. Well, as you can see tonight, we didn't conduct as much business, but we talked about quality of life issues, and we're going to do this for a little bit. Really, it's kind of kind of the council deals, uh, we are going, and we want to make sure we are responding to the needs of what you guys see. Some of it we don't have control of is about the nature of the growth. What we will do is manage how that growth occurs, and that's why we need input consistently from the, uh, uh, the system. And that doesn't mean we'd like you to camp, uh, camp out in the manager's office, but you know, we have to email on the phone, so, you know, when something occurs to you, you know, give us a ring, shoot us an email, that, that, that lets us know that you're engaged and we're performing on your behalf. Because if not, we will run off on our own device and we will create all kinds of habits. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here is one uh, last thing, and I don't want to uh, take long. We have a, a letter from citizens. This is a uh, uh, dear city manager, mayor, and city council members. Uh, it is so great seeing so much progress being made in our town and all seen. I was excited when the streets downtown were striped. It really made a huge difference. Now, farm lines and culverts are being replaced in different places. Much thanks for working on Old Town. And all seen. Uh, it's uh, signed by Suzanne Michael. So, uh, thank you for the thank you. And it, it, it just goes to show that, you know, all efforts are noticed and, uh, and appreciated. So, uh, once again, so if you, you have an idea, and please communicate that to the students. So, with that, uh, now uh, we'll have a hopefully Mr. Boyce will come and do the drive this day. He should be happy, so we'll <laughs>